Okay, so we know about arrays. So an array is a list of variables. So we're going to have the first variable in a list and a second variable in a list and the third variable or the 70th or the 21st or whatever variable in a list. It's a list of variables, basically. So that was one-dimensional arrays. And now I want to talk about two-dimensional arrays. So here I have a untitled notepad file because I want you to think about a chessboard. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight spaces wide by eight spaces tall. I know the aspect ratio is a bit weird, but it's it's an eight by eight grid. So each of these represents a space on a chessboard. Now, if you think about what what can each space contain? Well, each space on a grid can contain, well, it can be empty. It can, and it can be any of the pieces. So that's pawn, king, queen, rook, knight, bishop. And it can be, and if it is one of those pieces, it can be black or white. So it can be a variety of different pieces. Now imagine if we just used a regular array to represent each one of these certain spots here. So say if we have the black at the top here and the white at the bottom here. We are able to say that this one is a pawn, so whatever number that is, number space, that's a pawn, and then whatever number that space is, that's a pawn, and then you could do that and you go down. Um, and then you just keep doing that, so you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then you go, the next line is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and you just keep doing that. So it's basically like a list. It's just like a list of of numbers. And technically speaking, it could be, it is possible to make it just a list. But that is really complicated. For example, let's say we have a bishop in this space here. And we want to say the different spaces that it can move. Well, we c it can move only diagonally because it's a bishop. But how do we determine diagonally? Uh, OK, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can add seven to the number so that it goes seven spaces further along. You can add nine to the number so that it goes nine spaces further along. But you can't make it go further like off the board so that's it can get really confusing and it really can get things really really confusing if you have just a one-dimensional array so what we'll do is we create a two-dimensional array so that way we have two variables to represent both the column and the row so we'll have numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for the column and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for the row. <clears throat> so now we have two variables. So say if we did have a rook in this space, for example, that can only move horizontally and vertically, it's much easier to actually say that either the column changes or the row changes. You can't say, and, and that's pretty easy to do, you put either this changes or that changes. And so it's a lot easier to actually do than a uh, one-dimensional array. But let's get rid of that for now and let's make a simpler board. So say we want to make a knot and crosses. But let's create a new object. And this is just a temporary object just to showcase something. But let's call this object X or knots and crosses, right? So what do we need to know about knots and crosses? Well, it's on a three by three grid. So let's create a variable. And let's call it grid. Now the grid it's a three by three space, so and there's going to be, and let's think about the different things. Actually, let's bring, hopefully, this will be fine. Let's bring this back on. Delete this about chess, and let's think about it. 
You've got a three by three spaces. I won't use zeros this time because it might be a bit ambiguous. Okay, each S represents a space. Now, this is a lot simpler than chess, which just means it's a better idea to use for a tutorial. But, what kind of space have on it? It can either be an X, it can be an O, or it can be empty. And the usual way to represent empty in, in as a text variable is to just make it open, close, um, quotation marks without anything in between it. So, it can either be it can be X, it can be O, or it can have nothing. Now, we have a 3x3 three three grid here, and we want to make it so that each space is free. Now, I suppose this could get a bit complicated here, so stick with me. The way that you write out two-dimensional arrays is you write the... You do you still do the square brackets, but you do put two values in. So say if I want the first column, the first row, I'll do one, one, like that. And I want that to equal empty space. So I can do this. I can do, and I, if, I, if I want to, I can repeat this so that it's one, two, and one, three. And then I could do the same for, and then I can repeat the same again for if the if the first dimension in the array is two. And then I can repeat that again for the third, the third column or row, whatever the first one indicates. Say, say the first one indicates the column, the second one indicates the row. So these are different like grid references, like coordinates. We want to say that they're all free. 